Hello, Mark Snape. This is Darren Prue with Land Resource Investments. Hi, Darren. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, I wanted to uh, uh, thank you for preparing this presentation we're about to see on the economic outlook for the Antelope Valley. But before we get started, I just want to ask you a couple questions, if that's all right. Sure. Well, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your organization? The official name of your organization is the California Economic Forecast. That's correct. Tell me a little bit about you and uh, your organization. Well, the, the California forecast has been in operation since 1989. It was a spinoff, uh, actually, from uh, the UCSB economic forecast. UCSB stands for? Uh, University of California, Santa Barbara. Oh, of course. And I ran the economic forecast department there for about 20 years up until the year 2000, then left uh, UCSB uh, and continued with doing forecasting and economic consulting through the California economic forecast. Very good. Now, um, we appreciate you working with us. What organizations have you worked with in the past? Well, we currently work with the California Department of Transportation. We forecast economic activity in every single county in California for the state and help them with their planning for infrastructure improvements long term. Then uh, we also forecast uh, about 25 different counties economic activity for Kaiser Permanente Hospitals to help them understand where the population and growth is moving in California so that they can plan to have enough resources, hospitals, doctors, et cetera, positioned. We consult with the Irvine Company in Orange County to help with their long-range planning for the Orange County area. And then we work with a number of developers and large projects in order to conduct feasibility analysis for large-scale developments in California. Mm, very good. Now, did I also understand you do some work for the state of California? For Caltrans, yes. For Caltrans. Uh, I, was, I did actually work in the controller's office earlier in the decade, but I'm uh, off that uh, assignment right now. I understand. Well, what will you be sharing with us today? Today, uh, I'm giving the economic outlook for the Antelope Valley, and not only is it sort of moderate term, out about four or five years, but uh, we also really look at what's going on with the current status of the economy in 2009-2010 and how the recovery in the Antelope Valley is going to look over the next 12 to 18 months. All right, very good. We'll go ahead and start the presentation. I'm Mark Schneep. I'm going to be presenting the economic outlook for the Antelope Valley as well as the status of the current economy there. The Antelope Valley is located in northern Los Angeles County, about right here in California. The uh, area could probably best be described as a triangular area located between the San Fernando Valley and eastern Kern County along Highway 14. The principal cities are Lancaster and Palmdale. In 2009, the population was estimated at 363,000 people. That represents about 3.5% of the population in the greater L.A. County area. Over the three-year period of 2006 to 2009, population growth was about 21,000 people in the Antelope Valley. Well, that represented nearly 11% of total population growth in L.A. County, the Antelope Valley accounting for nearly three times its fair share of the overall growth in population in Los Angeles County. New housing units approved through the entitlement process. There were over 7,000 in the Antelope Valley, 2006 to 2009. That represented 11% of all houses permitted in LA County during this time period. Retail sales, about $3 billion and that represents 3.6% or approximately the fair share of population in the Antelope Valley. And new jobs created over the three-year period, well, needless to say, the recession has wrecked havoc on the labor markets. You've actually seen a job loss in the Antelope Valley. However, the number of jobs lost only represent 1.7% of total job decline in LA County. The Antelope Valley is actually doing a little bit better regarding job fallout. 
let me talk a little bit about what I call dirt theory and, and why the Antelope Valley has prospered over the last 10 or 15 years. There's three phases of evolution in the growth of a region. The first phase is the affordable housing phase and developing affordable housing in areas where the land is inexpensive. This leads to the first phase of employment gain and that's in population serving jobs for retail and service industries. This is how a region really starts to get growing. The second phase is the development of industrial facilities also to take advantage of less expensive land. Blue collar jobs are then created and the population begins to grow and reaches a particular threshold where office facilities now are going to be built and the development of executive housing, the third phase. This brings in upper management populations, skilled workers, and higher paying jobs to the region. This is the phase that the Antelope Valley is in right now. Here's a map of the Southern California area. Here is the Los Angeles Basin. It was the first to grow a hundred years ago in California but as congestion started to take over, uh, we saw movement out into Orange County, into San Diego County, into Ventura County, but as those places got crowded as well, you started to see growth inland to the Murrieta, Temecula, Hemet Triangle in Riverside County and out into the Coachella Valley, into the Apple Valley of San Bernardino Valley, and into the Antelope Valley of Northern LA County. These areas are currently, well, they currently represent very inexpensive housing, cheap land, cheap dirt, and they are the areas of significant growth in California today, even despite the slowdown due to the economy. The coast has been fully developed in California. The areas of growth that we've seen over the last several years and what we will see over the next several years will be the inland areas of Riverside, San Bernardino, Kern, and Northern LA County, the Sacramento Valley, and the Central Valley, principally the San Joaquin Valley. When you look at the fastest growing counties from a population standpoint in California, three of the top four counties are in Southern California over the last three years. If the Antelope Valley was a county, it would be ranked number four in California. Overall population gains in Southern California have slowed down with the current economic cycle, but we are still adding uh, 200,000 people per year in Southern California. In fact, the outlook, which is very conservative over the next 10 years, calls for about 200 to 275,000 additional people per year in Southern California. Number of housing units needed to accommodate this increase in population is estimated at 60 to 80,000 per year over the next 10 years. The question is where will they be built? Well, they're probably not going to be built in the coastal areas. There's no room and it's too expensive. So they're going to have to be built inland. That's where buyers have been purchasing in a prolific fashion over the last five or six years, and that's where they're going to continue to over the next five or six or indefinite time period. Why? It's because you still have high home prices on the coast. There's not much room to move. Most of the room to move is going to be the inland areas. It's going to be the Antelope Valley, the Apple Valley, and the Coachella Valleys. In fact, here is the current affordability statistics for housing in Southern California. Antelope Valley, the median price in 2009 was about 154000 In the greater LA County, it was more than double that. Santa Clarita Valley, which is adjacent to the Antelope Valley, 352000 Ventura County, over 400000 And if you chose a home in the Antelope Valley versus Orange County today, the median priced home, you'd save over $300,000 doing it. The current status of the Antelope Valley, well, job loss has been deep and broad-based throughout Southern California. 
throughout California for that matter, and it's also true in the Antelope Valley. The principal job loss has been in construction, manufacturing, the retail sector. Uh, these, uh, this is where we've seen the greatest fallout. The unemployment rate has leaped past 15% now. Um, it's probably near its highest level for the economic cycle. Commercial real estate markets are weak. They're weak right in line with the weak labor markets in the Antelope Valley. And the retail fallout due to the decline in consumer spending has been severe. Home production in 2009 was virtually negligible. I'll show you some evidence of that later. This is the area which has been hit hard by homeowner distress and foreclosures, but that now appears to be reversing. The question is, will it last? So I'll talk about that. In general, the region remains weak today, but a recovery which is slated for the nation, for California, for Southern California, will occur this year. It'll be weak, but nevertheless, it will occur, and it'll occur in the Antelope Valley. We see more population growth. It still is positive in the Antelope Valley in 2010, 2011, 2012. You're going to see more retail growth and a lot more housing growth. The number of residential uh, units which are currently approved and in the entitlement queue are absolutely prolific in the Antelope Valley. I'll show you some evidence of that. Existing home sales have been strong the last year or two, principally due to how affordable the Antelope Valley is relative to other areas in Southern California. Home prices, by the way, have actually stabilized in the Antelope Valley and are moving higher today. And retail spending due to consumers finally coming back into the stores is rising again. Let me focus a little bit on the labor markets of the Antelope Valley. This is job growth tracked over the last six years through December 2009. This is year-over-year -year job growth tracked monthly. Since the uh, onset of the uh, recession in January of 2008, you can see that uh, job growth in the Antelope Valley has pretty much been moving right in tandem with the greater Los Angeles County uh, decline in job growth very even. Previous to the recession, however, job growth was a lot faster in the Antelope Valley, and that has given the Antelope Valley a lot more concentration of job creation than in the greater LA area over the last decade or so. The fallout that we've seen in the Antelope Valley over the last couple of years uh, comes to be about 4,000 jobs. Previous to that, we saw a significant amount of job creation occur. Retail sector has uh, eroded away. The construction sector has been a victim of the fallout. And manufacturing in the Antelope Valley has uh, seen a decline in jobs as well, about 1,200 from the peak. This is now starting to stabilize, however. Financial activity sector, which includes your banks, your mortgage lenders, real estate brokers. Uh, interestingly enough, we did not see a significant amount of fallout in the Antelope Valley. That has basically been stable. Professional and scientific services employment, these tend to be higher paying jobs in the Antelope Valley. We saw a little bit of dilution earlier in the decade, but for the most part over the last several years, it has moved lateral with not much job loss at all. The unemployment rate has ticked up to about 15% and will probably stay here for most of 2010 before improving next year. Despite the recession, despite the job loss uh, in some principal sectors, uh, a lot of the higher paying jobs have uh, remained in the, in the Antelope Valley and salaries have continued to rise. We haven't seen much fallout at all in terms of average salary per worker. Moving to the residential real estate sector, home sales in California have been strong. They were strong throughout 2008 and into 2009. Many of these home sales are distressed, but uh, now as the foreclosure inventory starts to deplete. We're seeing a lot more conventional home sales in California and in Southern California. Conventional home sales, of course, are your happy buyer, happy seller transactions. 
rather than your distressed seller transactions. With uh, higher home sales, with the fact that uh, buyers understand that probably the bottom in the real estate market has been reached, uh, we're now starting to see multiple bids on homes. This is driving prices a little bit higher in California, and we are off the lows that were recorded back in the spring of 2009. In the Antelope Valley, we've actually seen the same kind of behavior, home sales rising very sharply in 2008, staying very high throughout most of 2009. But uh, in Lancaster and Palmdale, we've actually seen a little bit of a fallout in the last six months. Why is that relative to the rest of California? It's because our inventories are declining very rapidly. There's not any new product being added in the Antelope Valley right now and all of the existing inventory is being snatched up with the high rate of sales. So we're now at inventory levels, which we haven't seen this low since the boom in, uh, it, with, with the housing uh, cycle. Median home selling prices in the Antelope Valley as of December had reached 163000 That's up 17% from the low that was recorded in April of 2009. So we're seeing a comeback here. It's occurring in Palmdale and in Lancaster with an uptick in home prices. Now what about foreclosures? This is a, 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 a particular area of uh, the economy which uh, threatens to produce uh, more trauma in the real estate sector. So uh, this is uh, uh, something that we've been following very closely. Notices of default, <clears throat> that's the first stage of the foreclosure process. They peaked in Southern California in the first quarter of 2009, but since then in the second and third quarters, we've actually seen them in decline. This is good news because as NODs decline, foreclosures will also decline three to five months after. Notices of default in the Antelope Valley, they recorded an all-time record high in 2008. There was a rebound in 2009, that was June, but since then we've seen NODs uh, and homeowner distress actually on the decline in the Antelope Valley. Foreclosures reached a peak in 2008. We did not see them rebound in 2009. In fact, uh, it appears that they are just simply moving lateral. They are not rising again, and that is good news for the homeowner distressed market, for prices, and for the recovery of real estate this year in the Antelope Valley and throughout Southern California for that matter. Let's talk about new development. The uh, number of homes that have been permitted uh, and started in the Antelope Valley in 2008 and 2009 reached all-time record lows with the uh, trauma in the housing market. That is setting up a situation in which we are likely to see a very strong rebound by 2011 because you simply have a tremendous amount of pent-up demand with population growth continuing to be positive into the Antelope Valley. There is some residential construction underway. The number of units in projects which are underway total about a thousand. Now, not all of those are underway at this point in time. Many of them have been delayed. They've been slowed down. But you can see that the entitlement queue in the Antelope Valley is prolific right now. Nearly 17,000 units are approved and could be started over the next several years. This represents anywhere between six and eight years of inventory. So once demand picks up and builders start to build again, there won't be too many obstructions to supplying housing to the population in the Antelope Valley. Here are some of the principal projects, Ritter Ranch, Anna Verde, Rancho del Sur, thousands of units. A lot of these uh, projects have been put on hold. Some of them are distressed. However, they are there, approved, ready to go, and they can be started once demand starts to pick up, which should occur in the second half of this year. New commercial and industrial structures, well, the development of those also reached an all-time low in 2009 in tandem with the residential markets. We look for that, however, to turn around. There's a lot of projects that uh, are entitled and they could start at any time, millions of square feet of office and retail and industrial facilities 
that will be able to accommodate growth in the Antelope Valley over the next five years. Let's talk about the forecast over that next five year period. In general, labor markets are set to recover in 2010 and show a lot more accelerated growth in 2011 and 2012. The commercial and industrial markets, commercial real estate, well, that will improve in line with labor markets with a little bit of a lag. Look for improving commercial real estate in 2011 with vacancy rates starting to come down and lease rates then starting to rise by 2012. The overall production of housing, well, we've seen that inventory levels are depleted. Once demand picks up, you're going to see a number of projects underway. They will start to uh, move this year, probably in the second half. Remember, population growth, while it has slowed a little bit, still remains at about 1.5%. It's relatively constant, and there's uh, going to be a significant amount of population that needs to be accommodated with new housing, not only this year and next year, but over the next five years. Job growth in the Antelope Valley has been, well, needless to say, horrific. Uh, like the rest of California, this year will be a recovery year with some job creation, but it'll, it'll look a lot more normal in 2011 and 2012 with uh, anywhere between four and 6,000 jobs created per year. The unemployment rate is going to stay probably high until there's much more momentum in the labor markets by 2011. The existing home sales market has improved over the last couple of years. It's expected to continue rising in 2010. However, 2010 will be characterized by a lot more conventional home sales, that is the happy buyer, happy seller, non-distressed transaction. And over the next several years, we look for home sales to improve. Selling prices reached a low in 2009. They are off their lows today. They will continue to improve in 2010. Don't look for appreciation rates to rival the housing bubble days of 2004, 2005, 2006, but we look for single digit slow progression of housing improvement over the next five years. And the retail markets, which hit a low in 2009, are only going to increase going forward, and that's going to set the stage for new retail facilities that will need to be built in order to accommodate the growing population in the Antelope Valley. Population growth has slowed down. It will probably stay about 1.5% in 2010, picking up some speed in 2011 and becoming much more normal in 2012, 2013 with 2% growth, something that we've seen over most of the decade that's just passed. This translates into about six to 8,000 people being added to the Antelope Valley population over the next five years. We currently have about 363,000 people in the LA portion of the Antelope Valley as of 2009 over the next five years. The conservative population forecast translates into about an additional 35,000 people. This brings the overall population of the Antelope Valley past 400,000. Well, to accommodate this, we're going to need to start building homes. And even our conservative forecast, in order to accommodate the additions to population, we're going to need at least 10,000 more homes over the next five years in the Antelope Valley. The overall summary for the region, it's weak now, but an economic recovery is going to occur in the Antelope Valley, as it will throughout Southern California in 2010. The labor markets are stabilizing. They will continue to stabilize throughout the first half, and you'll see job creation begin certainly no later than the year's end. Home sales are going to remain strong in 2010. They're strong now. Affordability is driving that behavior and the stability of the labor markets and ultimately the creation of jobs. Foreclosures, they remain in general decline and the entire market for distressed homes is only going to improve because home prices are rising and labor markets will be creating jobs again.
So look for job creation, home sales, and consumer spending to have a transition year in 2010 and to begin to accelerate in 2011 and 2012. The biggest question that we have, we have is for all of Southern California economy, but what's important to you is, is the Antelope Valley going to strengthen right along with the rest of the California and Southern California economies, or will there be a delay? Well, if you invoke the DIRT theory, the answer is strictly yes. This is some of the most affordable housing in all of Southern California. Land remains cheap. The, reasons, the region's housing stock is simply much more affordable. And for the most part, there is room to move to accommodate a growing population of LA County, more so in the Antelope Valley than just about any other place in LA County today. That's the outlook for the Antelope Valley. Thank you. Mark, thank you very much for that presentation. It's interesting to look at the statistics and, and look at it from that point of view. Appreciate you sharing that information. I do have one clarifying question. You talked about existing home prices in the Antelope Valley. I think the number was around 163 or so thousand dollars. What can you tell us about new home pricing? Because I assume that median home prices takes into account the you know older homes. You know there are a lot of three bedroom, one bath one-car garage homes in the Antelope Valley, and I, and I assume that skews the number. What are your thoughts there? Well, we have so much more information and, and data on the existing home market. I mean, there are thousands of sales that are going on in the Antelope Valley, and so uh, that data tends to be a little bit more sturdy right now. And you're right, the prices are uh, 150 to uh, to 200,000, that sort of range in Lancaster and Palmdale for existing homes. And for the new home market, which is a lot fewer sales right now because there's not a lot of new homes being built, but prices are a lot higher. In Lancaster, prices during uh, the last half of 2009 were about 260000 and in Palmdale, they were about $280,000 for, uh, for a new home. So maybe uh, it's almost maybe about $100,000 more for a new home versus existing homes. Well, that's that's currently the case, and mm -hmm. uh, as you rightly said, the existing homes could be smaller. They're also subject to a significant amount of distress right now, Sure. which is not characteristic of a new home. Yeah, I understand. Well, thanks for uh, clarifying that. Question, if people want to visit your website, would you share that address with us? Oh, sure. It's www.californiaforecast.com. And at our website, we have a newsletter that any of your investors can download at any time. It's free. It's on the home page. We also list uh, where we're giving our conferences and all of our current publications on the California economy. I appreciate you sharing that, and thank you for that offer of the newsletter. I want to thank you for your time, Mark, and appreciate your input and thoughts today. Thank you, Darren. Thank you.